Hello, welcome to Prejim Technologies. I'm Venkat. This is part 12, switch statement continued. In part 10, we have seen if statement. In part 11, we have seen the introduction to switch statement. In this part, we will write a sample coffee purchasing program using switch, go to, and break statements. So let's get into the demo. Now, I want to write a very simple program which enables people to buy coffee and ultimately present a bill. So first let's present a menu to the user, console.writeline. And our coffee shop sells three sizes of coffee, coffee small, one for small, two, um, maybe two for medium, and three for large. Okay. So once the user has made a choice, he will enter his choice on the console in our 1, 2, or 3. We need to read that from the console and let's store that in a variable. Let's call that variable user choice. So console.readLine reads the number in the form of a string. So we need to convert that to integer and we do that using the parse method. So once we have converted that to integer, now we need to decide, okay, uh, in our coffee shop, the small coffee cost uh, is, you know, maybe $1, medium coffee $2, and large coffee $3. So we have to calculate the cost accordingly. So to store the cost of the coffee, let's create a variable. And maybe we'll call this total coffee cost. and we'll initialize that to zero so we will switch on the user's choice so if user's choice is case one in the sense he has selected a small coffee S small coffee cost you know one dollar so we can say total coffee cost total coffee cost plus equals one Okay, whereas on the other hand, if the user has purchased a medium or a large coffee, if it's medium, then the cost of the coffee um, the cost of the coffee is two. If it is large, then the cost of the coffee is three dollars. All right, if the user has selected any other option apart from one two or three we want to present an error message on the screen saying that his choice is invalid so on a default console.writeline whatever his choice was so your choice is invalid and his choice is present in that user's choice variable so we print that and then we break out of this loop so look at this until now we have written a very simple program all we are doing is present a menu to the user and the user will select one of the options and once he enters his choice you know if it's one we are calculating it as one dollar two dollars three dollars respectively if it's not any of those choices from the menu then we present a message saying that invalid user choice so let's go ahead and run this at this point okay it's asking the user um, to enter his choice there so if i enter two so press any key to continue it's not doing anything we are just calculating the total cost but we are not printing the message so let's go ahead and do that so finally when he is done with his coffee shopping so console.writeline Thank you for shopping with us. And we need to present the bill amount. So console right line. And whatever is the bill amount. Bill amount equals 
total coffee cost. So we are printing the total coffee cost. Now if we go ahead and run that, okay, so we have to choose from those options. Let's say I want to buy a large coffee. I enter 3, so thank you for shopping with us. Bill amount equals 3. Now let's make this program a little more interactive by allowing the user to buy, you know, to shop as long as he wants. Because right now, if he wants to buy another coffee, he has to run the program again. Rather than doing that, let's put this program in some kind of a loop using go to statement so that he can continue shopping, you know, as many coffees as he wants until he decides, okay, I don't want to buy any coffee. Then we will terminate the program. Let's see how to do that. Instead of running this every time he wants to buy a coffee. So, we want to present the bill at the last after he finishes shopping. So, even before that, we will ask the user, console of right line, do you want to buy another coffee? And the options for these are yes or no. Okay, so the user now will enter yes or no. So we have to read his choice from the console and store that in a string variable. User choice. Okay, we already have that variable called user choice. So we'll use um, user decision maybe. use a decision whether he wants to buy another coffee or not. So we can use another switch statement or if else it's up to you. But let's use switch statement because we are learning about that right now. So switch on user decision. Okay. Now there's an important thing to note here. Now look at this. Here in the first switch statement the data type is actually integer. So if the user choice is 1, 1 is an integer, 2 is an integer, 3 is an integer, and we are storing that in this variable of type integer. So we are, the case is actually an integer because we are switching on an integer data type. Your case has to respect that. So if it's an integer here that you're switching on, it has to be integer on every case except for the default. Similarly, here the user decision variable is carrying a string data type. Okay, so now when you switch, you know, you're switching on a string data type, so your case has to match that data type, and strings are usually within double quotes. So if yes, he wants to continue shopping. So if he wants to continue shopping, we want to present the menu to him once again. So we want the control to go here, so we create a label. And what's a label? We'll just come to that in just a while. It's kind of a marker. Okay, so I'm creating a label called start. Now, what do you, we will talk about labels in just a minute. So, if the user wants to buy, you know, another coffee, we have to go to start. So what we are saying is, okay, he wants to buy another coffee. So the control will immediately go to start. And then it again presents a menu to the user. And as usual, the process goes on until it comes back here again. Okay, so what's a label? A label is a kind of a marker in a program, you know, where you your go-to can jump. Okay, if this label is not here, I don't know to tell my program how to go to this, this console.write line you know, go there and start executing that again. So that's why we can mark our code with labels. So this position in this program is called a start. And if the user decides to buy another coffee, I want the control to jump to this location and start executing the code from there again. So a label is a marker in the code to identify a location where you want the control to jump back. So on the other hand, if the case is no, if the user has decided, okay, I have done enough shopping, I don't want, to, I don't want to buy any more coffee, then he can just quit. So what we do here, we don't do anything, just break out of the case statement there, 
and if it is a default he didn't enter s or no he entered something else so at this point of time we want to present him with an error message that his choice is invalid so what do we do console dot right line your choice is invalid your choice is invalid please try again okay and then it has to go back to this location here okay because we asked him to enter sr now but he entered some garbage which the program cannot recognize okay so we need to ask him okay the options are very clear it has to be yes or no nothing nothing else okay so we need to tell the program to go there and start executing that piece of code again and to do that we need a second marker there so let's say we call this as um, decide location okay the user has to decide whether he wants to buy the coffee or not so what we can do here is go to decide okay so it goes here and again it asks the user whether he wants to you know continue purchasing another coffee or not now another important thing to notice here is that every case statement usually if you look on the top every case statement has a break statement meaning if this case is true execute this piece of code and break out of the switch statement okay but here in this switch statement we either have break or go to so we don't have to use break if i use go to because look at this the moment i hover my mouse away there is a green squiggly there a green squiggly in c sharp indicates it's a warning it's not an error okay and if you look at the intellisense it says unreachable code detected that means this piece of code is never going to get executed because why if this condition is met if the user decision is yes we are saying go to start so what happens the control immediately jumps back to the start label at the top of our program and starts executing from there so this code will never get executed so there is no need to have the break statement it already is getting out of the switch statement when it encounters this go to so there is no need to include break statement if you have a go to statement there all right so let's go ahead and run our application and see if it works fine without issues so it's asking the user to choose let's say i want to buy a large coffee do you want to buy another coffee i would say no maybe garbage your choice okay so there is a problem our program we haven't you know substituted a value for that placeholder so let's fix that so your choice we need to enter that there user decision okay whatever he has typed so let's go ahead and run this okay so let's say i want to buy a medium coffee this time so do you want to buy another coffee i say garbage your choice whatever is invalid please try again so it's working as expected now let's say i want to buy another coffee yes okay let's say i want to buy another medium coffee now it's asking me do you want to buy another coffee let's say i enter all capital letters look at that i'm saying yes but i'm i'm entering all capital letters let's say see again your program says your choice yes is invalid yes is yes whether it's smaller capital letters so my program is not kind of treating that yes as yes because the case doesn't match so let's make our program you know consider all forms of s whether it is small or capital or a mix of capital and small letters so how do we do that once we get the user decision okay however he enters that you know small letters capital letters a mix of them okay we will base our decision on a consistent scheme so these labels so case labels yes no they're all capital letters so whatever the user enters i'm going to convert that to an upper case using this function okay on the string i'm calling a function called to upper which will convert all the characters in that string to an upper case so now no matter what the user types you know it will all be uppercase 
and if it is yes word it will match as yes if it's no it will match matches no otherwise it gets into the default we will talk about string manipulation functions in a later module in a very great detail when we actually cover functions in this module so let's go ahead and run this so one for small two for medium three for large let's say i enter some 234 which is not a valid menu your choice 234 is invalid do you want to buy another coffee now this is problematic now it's it's a, i mean my choice is invalid so it should go back and say okay your choice 234 is invalid so you you have to choose one two or three so my first switch statement is not working as expected so let's go and fix that so if it is default instead of going to this one do you want to buy another coffee because i haven't made a purchase yet okay so what i can do instead of breaking here i can just say go to start meaning my choice is an invalid choice so i didn't end up buying a coffee so go back to the start location and execute again okay and just to make this program Select your coffee. So please select your coffee size. Let's say I enter 234 now. Your choice 234 is invalid. Please select your coffee size. So let's say I want to buy a large coffee. Do you want to buy another coffee? Let's say I enter a mix of small and capital letters and say yes uh, please select your coffee size let's say i want to buy another large coffee look at this now irrespective of whatever i have entered mix of small and capital letters it's still working if i enter all small letters it still works so let's say another large coffee so until now i have purchased three large coffees so if the program is working as expected a large coffee costs three dollars so three into three um, dollars is nine nine dollars is my total bill at this point i want to conclude my shopping so i will type no thank you for shopping with us bill amount is nine dollars press any key to continue when i do that the program terminates so it's a very simple program basically um you know multiple uh two switch statements that we are using okay so that's it for today thank you for listening and just before we wind up let's go ahead and conclude so break statement so if break statement is used inside a switch statement the control will leave the switch statement that's what we have seen and go to statement you can either jump to another case statement or to a specified label so using go to you can actually jump to another case statement for example let's say i want to go to case one from here i can actually do that i can say go to case one and it works without any fine uh, without any problem let's say i build this um, okay go to case one case is small letter so if I build this in the status bar you can see that build succeeded so using go to you can jump to a label or you can jump to another case statement okay but using go to is a very bad programming style we should avoid go to by all means this because if the control jumps randomly from one location to another location debugging of that program will become extremely complex and anything that you can achieve with the go to statement can be achieved with loops later in in loops module we will rewrite this same program using a while and do while loop okay and we can by all means if there is a possibility to avoid go to statements please do so because it makes programs more complex to debug thank you for listening have a great day